For our cheap sports car challenge, we searched with Auto Tempest where you can find any car, but we were looking for rear wheel drive, manual transmission, two seaters for less than $7,500. I found this 2004 BMW Z4. We're Americans, so it's Z, not Z. I bought it without a pre purchase inspection and promptly drove it home. Since then, I've discovered what's wrong with it. I bought the SLK after discovering it on Auto Tempest. The color scheme was right, and even though it had high miles, the Florida owner indicated that he drove it normally and it just ran. Without doing a pre-purchase inspection, I bought the SLK for $6,500 and had it shipped to Utah. This is not our normal day. We are now at a garage. Hey, we're wrenching. But thanks yep. to our friends at Raptor Creative to give us the lift and some shop time and some tools. And we also, because we can get them up on a lift, we can get underneath them and I can see, let's see, the new shocks that are on the Z4. We yep. can fix the things that are wrong. I mean, this is the problem. You buy these old cheap cars, you don't do the pre-purchase inspection, then you just discover stuff after. This is the discovery and fix step. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels helping you find a car you'll love. This is our second cheap car challenge, and with the help of Auto Tempest, we're doing a year of adventures in $7,500 sports cars. Subscribe so you don't miss a thing. This is the straight six three liter, which is the one you want, and I bought it for $7,000 with 113,000 miles on it. It was in Arizona, and it came with the M Motorsports stripes, which we all know means I'm serious and it adds at least five horsepower. I knew the tires were in good shape, but the ride was rough and full of strange compressions and movement. I replaced the shocks with brand new Bilsteins. It cleaned up the body movement, but it remains harsh. This is a stiff car. Luckily, the damping and compressions are now reliable and well controlled, but there's still no steering feel. After being shipped to Utah, the SLK arrived absolutely filthy inside and out, but that was easily solvable, of course. The body appeared to be straight and had no dents. The center console is broken and doesn't open, the footwells were full of beach sand, the shift boot is quite worn, and it appears that the top was always kept open in some sort of effort to let hurricanes wash the interior. The navigation system is typically early 2000s technology, and the radio appears to be inoperable, but CDs work. Yep, I'm taking you way back. The worst issue that I discovered was a very soft brake pedal. It didn't begin to slow the car down until getting very close to the floor. Very disconcerting. Clearly the prior owner wasn't very hard on this car. Thanks to our friends at PowerStop Brakes, they are sponsoring this entire cheap car challenge in part, and they have sent us two kits. So what they recommend is full kits for your cars, no modifications, but we can change out the brakes today and both cars in one day. This is great. Once we got the BMW up on a lift, I got the chance to really inspect the new suspension. The parts are coming off the car now. They're coming off the car because they weren't properly connected to the car, which is never really very good news. We discovered that the drop links are mostly worn out and all the front bushings could stand to be replaced. Look at the pretty Bilsteins. The problem is there's probably a dozen parts around that that I should have also replaced. And so we have to ask that question of, okay, 115,000 miles on this car almost. Uh, how much do we want to replace in this cheap sports car challenge? And the answer is not all of it. But once you get in here, start looking at the suspension components. I mean, pretty much all the bushings, a lot of this stuff could be replaced. And so now we have to assess uh, when and how much. The brake pads were pretty good, fairly new, but the rotors hadn't been replaced in a long time. I'm giving an incredible impression of somebody that knows what they're doing. I put the Z26 performance kit on it from PowerStop and it instantly improved the look of the car. Now we get to see how it stops. After seating the brakes, it has continued to have excellent stopping power, no noise and almost no dust. In fact, this is much cleaner than any brakes I've had before. Meanwhile, the interior and paint show most of the age and why it was so cheap. Someone smeared some touch-up paint on multiple spots on the car. They were clearly the same person doing the same terrible job in every spot. This interior latch broke off and flew away at some point, so in-cabin storage is, uh, is pretty minimal now. The driver's seat is quite tired with terrible leather. This is the reason it has a seat cover from the prior owner. And it's completely collapsed on the driver's side. You actually sit at an angle. I may have to get another one just so it doesn't hurt me. Z23 kit for the Mercedes, Z26 kit for the Z4, but it includes all of the stuff. So you get the clips, you get the rotors, pads, everything is included. Frankly, it makes it pretty easy. 
That has got to be original. Put my caliper on there. We can see exactly how much we take on. I replaced the pads and rotors with the Z23 Power Stop kit. All right, like a Mercedes. There, that feels good. Looks good. Stand by with that. I'll get the hang off the car. And I flushed the brake fluid. Stopping power is now excellent, and it's transformed the car. The SLK desperately needed new rear tires, but the most important feature, the mechanical hardtop, works just fine. It's still completely waterproof, except maybe it's not. After a recent wash, Todd drove it and identified the headliner seal as leaking mystery ooze. And we're going with that. It drips down onto the seat and I have to clean it off. The one thing still hanging over my head though is potential engine failure. The V6 in this car was included in a class action lawsuit against Mercedes regarding the balance shaft cam gear located right at the bottom of the V of the block. On early models, it was made out of soft steel and prone to breaking or slipping the timing chain, which causes massive engine damage. However, the problem usually showed up between 60 and 80,000 miles, and now here's this car with well over 154,000 miles on it running fine. I have no idea if it's been replaced. It could either keep running fine or I'm in for a very expensive repair bill. The best part of this car though remains the manual transmission. I wish more manuals were this good and that Mercedes still offered one. It's definitely one reason to consider this car. You and I are not mechanics is what we've concluded, but thank God for after creative and a lift and the ability yes. to have good tools yes, absolutely. and a power stop for these good brakes. All you have to do is go to powerstop.com Use their easy to use car finder, you put in the gear, they make a model of your car, and then you find your favorite retailer to go buy your brake kit. Luckily, these cars haven't shown any horrible surprises so far. That means we have to put some miles on them. Next time, we're taking an epic road trip. Do your own $7,500 or less search. Click the Autotempest link in the video description and tell us in the comments what you've come up with.